What's up everybody, this your boy Chris Reed Beats back with another video. Now you guys often ask me a ton of questions and you ask me to do videos on a ton of topics and I try to do my best to get to those questions and get to those topics. But every so now and again, I start to notice that the comments are building up with different questions. So I'm gonna answer some of those questions today. Okay, so this is from Ruth Venism. Is it wrong to crank up the volume of the rack if the instrument is too low? Also, what's the correct volume on your computer for music production? Because I usually put it around 80 to 90 percent. Great question. So first of all, when it comes to your computer, 80 to 90 percent seems like that's a good spot. You could leave it there. You can try and experiment pushing it to 100 and see if you're getting the volume that you're looking for. But I say you're fine on the computer side. If you're not getting enough audio out and you want to hear your music louder, then you might need to upgrade your monitors upgrade your interface or get a headphone amp or some kind of amp that's going to boost your audio after it leaves your computer where you're listening to it either on your monitors or your headphones. Now when it comes to inside of Reason, you want to pay attention to your meters and you want to pay attention to your sound. There's many ways you can increase the volume. You could do it through the rack on the master level or the master volume knob on each of the instruments. You also can add gain or limiters or compressors to those instruments in the rack. You also can do gain staging on your mixer because there's an input knob on your mixer that will allow you to get plus 18 dB of level on any one of those mixer channels. And then of course there's the post processing in terms of mixing and mastering. Uh, Marlon Blackmon says, dope track. I personally don't really use synchronous, but I'm definitely going to start playing around with it now. Would you say object is the best synth and reason? Well, first of all, let me say thank you. Synchronous is a great effect. You definitely want to be using it more in your music um, if you have needs for modulation or creating that kind of effect where you can change things over time and create your own patterns with those modulations. Uh, without using automation or even with automation because you can automate the different knobs inside of synchronous as well so definitely you should be using synchronous more object is totally just like out of this world would you say object is the best synth in reason um i don't think i would say object is the best synth in reason and that kind of question is kind of hard for me to answer i would just say the one that i go to the most pretty much in any project that i do would be like a subtractor or a maelstrom that's not to say that they're the best either it's just the ones that i go to the most i think the patches that they created for object are some of the best patches that i've heard on reason raji raji roji it's like reggie but with an o raji raji one says is music your full-time job Music is not my full time job. I would love for it to be my full time job where it's like I just make music and then that's how I make my income. I haven't had like a full time job uh, in a long time. Everything has just kind of been split between me and my time. So I like to do a lot of different things. So I want to make it to where I can do those things and be able to provide for my family. I love YouTube, so I love making YouTube videos and the channel has been doing great. We've been able to make a few dollars from the channel, so that's been awesome too. I just try to split my time between all of the passions that I have, but yeah, it would be great to have music as my full-time job. Fingerboarder306 says, this was good. Do you have a tutorial on the mastering after this process? I would really appreciate it. Mastering, I have covered on a live stream I'll leave the link down below in this video and maybe we'll do a dedicated video just on mastering alone where we talk about things like uh, stereo field of course limiting and getting your sound to max loudness we can also talk about soft clipping hard clipping um, and we can talk about multi-band compression actually getting your different uh, EQ exactly how you want it to be those those targeted harsh areas that you want to take care of in your EQ, right? We can talk about all of those things, making it sound clearer or wider or making your sound, you know, sound good on whatever you're listening to it on uh, that whole step of the mastering process inside of reason. I think that would be exciting and definitely a challenge. So definitely something to think about. So we'll think about doing that in the future. 
Jaquai Johnson 39 says, question, what the heck is the wave button for that's next to the folder button? It says start sample when you place the mouse over it. So for this question, it's probably better that I show you than just talk about it. So I'll show you right here what start sampling does. So this button right here is the start sampling button. It is found on other devices inside of Reason. When you click that button, you will start sampling whatever it is going into your sampling input. Now, in order to set up your sampling input, we need to go to the top of the rack. We could do that by pressing the home button on our keyboard. And at the top, you will see this button here that says audio in and outs. You want to click that button and then you will see your sampling input right here. Now, if we flip the rack by pressing tab, we'll then be able to see what is our sampling input connected to. Right now, it's connected to our master out. So we will be able to sample the master out of my track or we can instead route this to our audio input and this would correspond to your audio interface. So I have a Scarlett 2i2. I have two inputs. Here are the two inputs, one and two. And when I connect them to one or two, then that is what I am sampling from. So it's the input on my audio interface. When I go here to hit start sampling, it's going to start recording whatever is coming into that sampling input. So our master out is going into the sampling input. But if you have an audio interface, you can use that to sample directly into Reason, say a microphone or a guitar, or if you had some other device that is plugged into your audio interface, you could record it. Rick Towers says, what version is this and why don't the rack extensions come with the software and it comes with the subscription? Would it be better to subscribe and have access to everything or own and have to buy everything? Rick Towers is a really great question. So the version of Reason that I use is Reason 12, but I also have a Reason Plus subscription to answer your question about what you should do in terms of rack extensions and, and everything else that you can buy and get. Some instruments are not available inside of Reason 12 when you buy it to own it. You get a plethora of instruments and effects, more than you could ever need. But if you want to add more, then you have to buy most of them, including players as well. So some instruments and effects you do have to buy, rack extensions you do have to buy. If you have a Reason Plus subscription, then many of those instruments and effects are free to you through the Reason Plus subscription and you can just install them and you can use them as long as you have a Reason Plus subscription. And it makes it very easy when you have Reason Plus in order to add those rack extensions to your DAW. If you want all that Reason has to offer, then you need to get Reason Plus. If you're okay with just having the standalone DAW and knowing that you own it, then you might want to go that route and then just try because you can try out all of the rack extensions, instruments, effects. You can try them out. You, they have trial versions of them. Try them out. See which ones you really need in your music production. And then if you really need them, then you buy them and then you own them and you own Reason forever or you can just do a Reason Plus if you wanna just try around with some things, use Reason Plus, and then if you don't really like those things, then you don't have to worry about paying the bigger price uh, to have them forever. What console is the Reason Mixer modeled after? This one. Phil Flycast says, hey, this is the first tutorial or there's another one before this. There's definitely another one. A to Z tutorials, we went from A to Z on those different tutorials. We also have a beginner reasons tutorial and an intermediate reason tutorial. JNAV4108 says, why would anyone use the master fader to control listening volume? Just turn the knob on your interface. When I see people open up their song files for reason and I see master volumes either cranked up to the top or they're down low or they're in the middle somewhere, they're not at Unity Game, you would be surprised how many people move that master fader around. Sometimes just for convenience, sometimes just because it's faster to move your mouse and move that down. Sometimes it's just because people just don't know. So that's really the reason why sometimes that happens. Like some people don't necessarily have audio interfaces. Like when I work on my laptop, I don't use an audio interface. I just use the laptop. I believe this video was about the control room knob and using that on my laptop just makes things totally better because I can get a little bit more volume out of the program and I can still have my instruments 
sitting where they need to be in, in terms of the signal flow and in terms of the volume and the gain staging that I did with that. I just need a little bit of that output to go a little higher without changing things that will you know, affect the export. So that's why the control knob is really important. The control room knob is really important because you can give yourself just a little bit more gain or you can, or you can, you know, remove some of that volume so you can like get more precise with your sounds. It really does help. So Caesar Simo 521 says, thanks, Chris. I'm still using Reason 10, but I really found this tutorial very helpful. Do you suggest upgrading to Reason 12 or should I wait for the next upgrade? Thanks a lot. I'm glad that the tutorial was helpful for you. Should you upgrade to Reason 12 right now from Reason 10? I would say yes. I would say there's plenty of things that you're missing out uh, from 11 and 12 that you're not getting in 10 that would make the jump to 12. OK, if you want to hold out for the next iteration of Reason, I don't know how long that's going to be. I don't know if they're you know, working on anything right now. There hasn't been any teasers on it or anything like that. So I would say Reason 12 might be here for a good, another year or two or so. So you might not want to you know, wait for the next version. You're already on 10. Um, but I can tell you it, it pretty much goes like this. If you have a legit copy of 10, then the price to upgrade to 12 won't be that steep. And the price to upgrade to the next iteration after you get 12, again, won't be as much as purchasing the entire DAW for the first time. Reason Plus also is another great option. I know we talked about the subscription service before, but it really is a great option for situations like this. I already own a version of Reason. Am I missing anything with Reason 12? Hey, don't spend all of the money up front to, to get Reason 12 if you don't know if you want that one or you want to wait to the next one. Get Reason Plus. You can see the full version of Reason 12 and still have your copy of Reason 10 that you own and you can go back and forth between them and you can test it out and see which one you really like. I need some phonetics for y'all names, man. <laughs> Rakan says, when you start a mix channel, do you always set it for stereo? No, I don't always set it for stereo. I set it for stereo if I'm using record source. If I'm using record source, I set it to stereo. That way it records both the left and right of the master volume. If I am recording a guitar or a microphone or something like that, then I don't set it to stereo. I leave it how it is and I just select the input that I'm using, either one or two from my Scarlett, and I will record the instrument with that. So most things I record in that way. I haven't had a time where I recorded in stereo using both inputs on my Scarlett, unless I'm micing up my drum kit. And in which case I still don't want a stereo. I don't want a stereo mix because I'm probably going to put a mic on the kick drum and a mic on the snare drum or the hi hats or something like that. And so I just want to concentrate those two areas in my drum kit. So I don't actually need a stereo mix channel for that either. What's up, Holla Sounds? I, I didn't see Holla Sounds on the channel a lot. I definitely recognize that name. What's good, Holla Sounds? Good to see you, man. What ATs are you wearing, the M40s or the M50s? So I have the M50s from Audio Technica. I love these headphones. These are like my, the ones I have now are either my second or third pair. Um, the first pair, I dropped them like really hard. And so one of the ears stopped working. So it was like, ah, oh, that's a bummer. But guess what? By that time, I had worn those things like every day. They were just wearing down, wearing down, wearing down, like the cord, the, the leather on the inside, stuff like that. So there's no other headphones that are as comfortable as these. When I first got the headphones and I put them on and I'm, I'm, they're super comfortable, I love the way that they sound. They work for me. You know, I, I get the sound that I'm looking for when I'm putting those headphones on. Those are the ones that I use, the M50s. I definitely recommend 10 out of 10. Blogout412, I think that's how you say your name, says how to bounce in a track inside the Reason DAW, what you play on another track in a vet while playing with the parameters. So I think I know what you're asking and I'm gonna show you how you can do that right now. So you wanna use Record Source in order to be able to do that. So just turn on Record Source start your recording, have an audio track here, 
uh, set your audio track to stereo and master section and then go to where that sound is playing that you want to record solo it out make the changes that you want to make make and then you can get that sound like that or you can do the start sampling so let's say i only wanted to change or i wanted to apply the changes just to that analog lab uh, sound right there instead of going into the input of my mixer channel or i can also just send a parallel out i can send a parallel out up here to the sampling input so now we have this parallel out going up in here into the sampling input and whatever changes I make, I can hit my start sampling and then whatever changes I make on that analog lab, whatever changes I make in here as I'm playing the sound will reflect in that audio recording. Mr. Sterling Foster says, I have Reason 11 and I don't have the Combinator 2. Is there a way with the Combinator and 11 to hook up a player device? Yes, you can use player devices in Reason 11. You want to have the most recent version of Reason to use the most recent updates to the Combinator, like those new knobs and the new editor and everything like that. So you're going to have the old Combinator, but you can still use the players, but you just won't have the new features of the new Combinator. What software do you use to record and edit? I'm having struggle to record my DAW in a proper way. Now, this is the kind of question that I really love. Um, I use OBS. Right now, I am recording on my camera, which is a Sony a7 III. I use OBS Studio, which is open broadcast software. Um, and it is completely free. You can get that from the web. I'll leave a link down below to that as well completely free and I also have videos on how to set up your OBS studio as well so I will leave links to that also and hopefully that will help you get your recording and everything ready to go all right guys and those are all the questions that I have so far for this video sometime I don't get around to answering comments or answering questions as thoroughly as I would like to so that's why I wanted to do this video so if you have more questions please be sure to leave them down in the comment section and I will meet you there thank you guys so much for watching again my name is Chris Reed I'll see you till next time Peace.